gonna start small, but think tall. And that's your plan with computers that can grow along with you. How are you gonna do it? Well, you're gonna PS2 it. With the IBM PS2. How are you gonna do it? Easy. You're gonna PS2 it. The solution is IBM. The solution is IBM. Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be looking at this. This is an IBM PS2. It's a model 3286. Um, this seems to be kind of one of the more popular PS2 models. Uh, there's actually a, a, quite a few videos of it up. Uh, this is not uh, an MCA uh, PS2, which is one of the which is one of the reasons that the PS2 line, one of the few reasons the PS2 line isn't really looked at with much uh, much love. I do have a, I did review a PS2 unit, uh, Model 55SX, I think, on my blog, but I didn't put a video up of it. Um, but I, I might be referring to it back and forth since that was an MCA version, which is microchannel architecture. That was IBM's uh, proprietary expansion slot format, um, which is faster than ISA, but it has some problems like there's not a lot of cards for it. And, um, well, there are, but most of them are like Ethernet cards and stuff like that. Uh, there's virtually no sound cards for it. There are a couple, but they're expensive and hard to find, which was one of the big problems why the PS2 line wasn't real popular. And they, at least they don't make good retro game machines. If you're just doing words, you know, spreadsheets in an office, it's okay. But for retro gaming, uh, this machine is actually a lot better suited for it because it uses standard 16-bit ISA, which really helps. Um, kind of a slim line. It's not very heavy machine. <clears throat> kind of small. Uh, unfortunately, though, you're uh, very limited on what, how many drives you can put. There's just two of these. Uh, I have a floppy and a hard drive. I know some of these had two floppy drives. And I like the power switch on these. You'll see more when I open it up. Um, it's just a 1.44 megabyte. Um, these are little face plates, they can come off. Um, <laughs> how it opens though, there's actually only two screws. You've got one screw on the side here, and one here. On the back, there's no, there's no other screws to open this case. Um, so power supply, here is, this is just, this is a standard VGA. Uh, the model, there's a model 30 that has an 8086 in it, and it uses MCGA. This is VGA, although someone did, like, see all this, I don't know, um, the ports kind of, they look okay, but I, I can't get an image out of this, um, so either the video chip's messed up, or someone did something goofy to it, but, um, see, there's these little punch-out holes, I believe this is, if you had an office and you didn't want your employees, like, stealing your computers, you could punch these out and you could run a chain through it and then lock it onto something you're real paranoid type. Uh, two PS2 ports, which is cool uh, for an older machine. It's always nice to be able to use more modern equip uh, mice and keyboards. Ugh. Serial port, parallel port. These are two car I, I added a video card. It even says a video on it. That's nice. And um, here's a sound blaster. I'll show you these when I open it up. So let's take a look at the inside. All right, here's the inside of the machine. I removed the cards already. Um, so you can see here's the floppy drive and the hard drive. Uh, this one, I believe it's factory, it's 20 megabytes. And um, they, there's little, they're on little sleds. So you pop out the front cover and they kind of slide out and slide in on the sleds. Uh, the downside of these is they use kind of a proprietary interface here. If you notice the floppy drive, there's no, uh, like, it might have been there's a solder point, maybe that's for it, but there's no power connector. Um, the power goes through this cable. So you're not going to be able to use a standard floppy drive. I don't know, it may just not work or some horrible thing may happen. I don't know because the power is going through this cable. Um, so you need special PS2 drives. Uh, this is an uh, IESD drive, I think. Um, they're supposedly a little faster than MFM drives, but again, it uses a, a card slot connector. See, 
but it's not standard. It's not like a MFM drive because there's no data cable. So they're usually on the MFM drive you have one and then you have a smaller one and, and uh, a power connector. This has, it's just this, it's just this one slot connector. Um, the good thing about this model uh, that the, oh, well, while we're trying to look, this is how the switch works. Um, here's the PSU and you've got this big red switch on it and a lot of computers you know it's wired up and it goes the wire goes to the front and you have a button or a switch and it directly turns it on but this is it just kinda see so it's kind of a weird setup it uses metal hook but from what I've uh, researched and what people have told me this is actually a safer setup because when your powers off it's actually off um, the PSU is off when the machine is off so it's actually kind of a safer setup, but I really haven't seen this sort of power setup outside of the PS2 line. Um, but as I was saying, yeah, you've got three 16-bit uh, ISA slots. But anyways, yeah, um, we've got these 16-bit ISA ports or slots. That means you can add uh, easily add video, ease cheap and affordable. Uh, and very available sound card options, whereas with the MCA slot machines, you're pretty much out of luck unless you want to spend, you know, well over a hundred dollars, um, if you can even find a card for it. But the other thing is you can put in a, just any kind of ISA, uh, IDE hard drive controller or SCSI controller. So if kind of the weird <laughs> IBM hard drive dies, you just put in a different controller. You should attach to the sled just fine, and there you go. Larger drives, more reliable, newer. Um, so that's that's a big plus. Another, but uh, downside, um, if you can see the RAM, this has one megabyte installed. The max they can take is four. You can probably add more with an expansion card, but four on board. These chips are kind of weird. They're IBM. Uh, but anyways, this uses special PS2. Uh, RAM slot, so you can't use standard. I think it's 30 pin RAM. You ha you have to find special PS2 type, which is kind of pricey and kind of uncommon. So uh, it's not as bad as say the sound card situation with an MCA machine, but it is annoying. I don't think all the RAM looks like this. Those weird metallic uh, chips. I believe actually, if you look on that side, there's some more nor there's more normal looking ones but it's still the PS2 type, so. Um, here's uh, the infamous Dallas real-time clock. Um, I hate these things. Uh, <laughs> basically, you know, there's a lithium battery and it's encode, it's coated in this stupid block thing. Um, anyways, they don't make these anymore and many of them are dead. This is actually a newer revision. Uh, I don't know if I can. It gets blurry. Anyways, but it still doesn't work. I know some people have gotten the newer ones to work. This one's either just dead or it just doesn't work. Uh, there is some kind of process where you cut off this top and you drill down and then you can connect a lithium battery holder to it and just use a lithium battery. I have not attempted to do that yet, but that's what's necessary with these things. Um, some of these PS2 machines, if this battery is dead, it gives you a lot of issues. This machine, not so much. I can still boot into the hard drive, the OS, with this not working. It just doesn't save any of your settings. Um, here we have one of those piezo beeper speakers. This was considered a budget model, so they didn't go all out with a full speaker. Um, same reason they have ISA slots, because the MSA was reserved for the high-end systems. Which is funny because this actually, the ISA holds up much better than the MCA slot system. So, um, here we have a 287 code processor slot uh, for a almost useless code processor, unless, as I've said before, unless you're doing uh, engineering CAD, stuff like that, or say a couple of few games like Falcon or SimCity that actually use the processor. Um, there's some wiring work around this chip. I think that's factory because I've seen some other videos online where this stuff that's also been done. So um, I don't know why they, they went back and did that maybe. But uh, the main, the processor is a 286 at 10 megahertz. This is, it's an AMD processor. Um, I'm not really crazy. This is one of the lower end processors of the 286 line. It, 
it just holds an awkward spot for me for this reason. It's a little too fast for, say, if you want to play, like, early CGA games that kind of demand uh, a 4.77 megahertz CPU or even a, a V20, or V20 upgraded one. It's just too fast, but it's also too slow for, say, later VGA games. So you're kind of in this weird spot where it could probably do early VGA games good. Uh, it's really, I guess you're, if you know if you're playing EGA games on this, it should handle it just fine. But it just it, it seems it's too fast for a lot of games and it's too slow for a lot of games. So it just kind of fits in this weird spot where it's not horribly good for like a wide range of games. I, I could be wrong on this. I haven't tried to play a bunch of games on this, but that's kind of my feeling. And it also lacks the coolness of, say, you know, a V30 or 8086 system, you know, turboed or beefed up, uh, like that Epson I've uh, reviewed before. So, I mean, it lacks the cool factor, and it's just, I don't know, I'm not crazy about it. A 16 megahertz chip, that would be cool, because I know those are pretty capable. Um, but I don't know, 10 just feels a little underpowered to me. Uh... Let's see, um, that's about, oh, it's not really up, uh, as for upgrades, uh, this is kind of soldered onto the board. I've asked some questions about possible upgrades, just pulling this chip out, putting in a faster chip, desoldering the oscillator, and soldering a faster one, but it, from what I've been told, it's not likely to work. It could work, could be unstable, um, but it's, it's probably not worth the effort. There are a few official upgrades. They're snap-on processor chips you can snap on and some of them actually have the coprocessor right on. They can upgrade it. I've seen one that upgraded to a, like a 25 megahertz 386. I've seen one that can upgrade to a 50 megahertz 386. But those upgrade options are very rare and expensive from what I have found and probably not worth the effort. You're better off building a 386 or a high end 286 than going through the effort. It's if you see one for a couple bucks somehow, well, by all means, but as I said, they are pricey and expensive. Um so that's pretty much this machine. Uh is it a great retro gaming machine? No. Uh again, it's just a hassle, the proprietary uh RAM, the proprietary hard drive and and floppy, it's just the, the CPU, it's just, it's not a great retro gaming machine. Now, is it better than the MCA based and a lot of the other PS2 machines? Yes. Um, mostly because of these ISA slots that you can, you know, it makes it a decent machine. So, I mean, if you're, there's there's IBM collectors. There's people that love to game on IBM. There's I, It's like an IBM thing. If that's your thing, then this is a pretty good option for you. Because it can be made into a decent retro gaming machine or just retro machine in general. Uh, I feel you're better off with another OEM system. It's a little bit less proprietary or better yet, building your own. But overall, it's not bad if you want an IBM PS2 for retro uses. Because um, it can be made half decent. Now, I'm going to show you those cards that I had installed. Um, the first one's just a VGA card. This is a Trident card. It's a... 8900C. Um, not a big fan of Trident. They're kind of they're well known for their low end stuff. Uh, but this is a decent card. There's also a D revision of this chip, which is pretty fast. It's actually known as a faster chip. Um, I think it has one meg of v uh, RAM on here, video RAM. But this is, these are cool cards because they work in 8-bit machines too. They're selectable. I believe this one auto detects. Uh, some of them have jumpers for that though. But this is a dual 16-bit, 8-bit card. So this will work in something that has 8-bit 8 8 slots too. Or 16-bit. But it, it's just a decent, it's an okay VGA card. And I needed a VGA card since the onboard wasn't working. And I'll bet you anything this is better than the onboard video anyway. So, um, for sound, you gotta watch a little bit with sound <clears throat> on this because it is a 286 and I found out that you want something that you can adjust with jumpers. It's not really plug and play friendly. Um, I went with a very early Sound Blaster 16. Uh, it's even, mine's missing, I think it's the ASP chip or whatever, but, you know, it has a, a Yamaha OPL on it. This is a CT-1000, 
1740 card. So this is a very early Sound Blaster 16. Um, usually you can tell if it has the volume wheel on it. But it has, as you can see, it has jumpers, so I can select the IRQ and the DMA and all that. And when I first installed this card, I just wasn't thinking about that, and I tried to run the usual the setup programs, and it locked up on me, and it just it didn't work. And then I feel, you know, it's 286, it doesn't really support plug and play. So really, if you're using a Sound Blaster 16, all you need to do is uh, edit the auto exec back, I think, and you just plug in the command line, and it, it works just fine. Um, this is kind of known as kind of a noisy card because the sound quality from it isn't the greatest. But you know, it's a Sound Blaster 16. It will work with virtually any game. Um, and this is a really early one. It actually lacks the hanging MIDI bug. Um, that's a whole other topic. But see, you can attach a Wave Blaster header or uh, you know, like an external MIDI box. And a lot, almost all of the Sound Blaster 16 and up cards have issues with those. You'll get like hanging middies or the music will stick, but this very early version for whatever reason does not have that bug. Um, but the sound quality from it is not great. So I'm going to boot this thing up for you. I'll show you how to get to the boot with it. Um, Cause I've seen some videos where people have had slight problems with that. So I'll just show you it booting up. All right. Just hit the power on this. Kids, counting up the RAM. One megabyte. Okay, so there's our error codes. That's because the CMOS battery is dead or incompatible. Um, there should be another one. Yeah, one six three. So I'm pretty sure that's because the battery. Now you just wait a minute, and then this pops up. And I've seen a couple videos where people get to this point and they don't know what to do. Um, and the, it, you know, hit F1. So and my keyboard's down. You hit. They do that. And they're like, why isn't it working? But you have to hold it down. Um, or press it really hard, I guess. It feels like I just pressed it. It worked. Okay. Um, anyways, I think, I mean, hold it down to be safe. I don't know why it worked that time. I was just pressing it. Um, and then here we go. So I just got to my startup here. Um, this is all on the original hard drive. So and there we go. So yeah, it's it's a working machine. It's functional. It's got the sound blaster in it. So um, that is the. Uh, anyways, that's the Model Thirty. 286. Thanks for watching.